Now we'll pass to the third part of our lecture today, and it is about the primary intestinal pathogens. What we mean by primary intestinal pathogens, it means these microorganisms, if they are present in the intestinal tracts, it means always that there is disease, there is infection. So they are not present as normal flora in the intestinal tract, but they are present. In the intestinal tract means that there's a disease, there's infection, always. They are not present as normal flora. These primary intestinal pathogens of enterobacteria include genus Shigella, genus Salmonella, and genus Yersinia. Today, we will talk about genus Shigella, and in the next lecture, we'll talk about genus Salmonella and genus Yersinia. Genus Salmonella can be transmitted from animals, while Shigella is the primary human pathogen. Now, today we'll talk about genus Shigella. Members of the genus Shigella cause bacillary dysentery. Bacillary dysentery is the characteristic feature of genus Shigella, which is the bloody diarrhea. Bacillary dysentery, a bloody diarrhea, it is one of the differential diagnoses of bloody diarrhea is by genus Shigella, members of genus Shigella. Now, as we said, Shigella is a primary human pathogen, and they are divided into four groups according to the ONT genes. These four groups differ in severity. The most severe one is group A, which is Shigella dysentery. Less severe is Shigella flexinary, Shigella boidi, and the mild one is Shigella sony. These are the four groups of genus Shigella that can cause bloody diarrhea dysentery. Now, what we will discuss today about genus Shigella, we will discuss these seven points. First of all, symptoms of the disease, biochemical activity, factors of pathogenicity, pathogenesis, prevention, treatment, and diagnosis. And we will start with symptoms of disease. The clinical symptoms of Shigellosis range from mild diarrhea to severe dysentery. Now, uh, first of all, all the uh, four groups will cause watery diarrhea, and then in severe groups, severe serotypes, there will be uh, dysentery or bloody diarrhea. Now, the severity of disease depends on four factors, four important factors. First of all, on the serotype of the disease of the group causing the infection. Second, on the dose of the infection, three, the immunity, and for the age of the patient. Now, regarding the serotype, as we said, the uh, Shigella dysentery is the most severe serotype causing the Shigellosis, bacillary dysentery, and Shigella sony is the uh, less severe, is the mild one. The dose, of course, the uh, more severe disease caused by uh, more dose of the bacilli, so 200 bacilli can cause infection. So you can imagine how this microorganism is so strong. Also, the immunity and the age of the uh, host. In the extreme age, which are the elderly patients and the infant, the immunity is decreased, so the severity of the disease will increase in these two uh, extreme of age, which are the elderly and the infant. There's more severe shigellosis. The incubation period is one to seven days or one to four days, and it is usually lasts for three days. And the symptoms last for one to two weeks. And the initial symptoms include watery diarrhea, fever, and fatigue. Then if the uh, <coughs> disease is more severe, the watery diarrhea will be changed into bloody diarrhea due to invasion of the intestinal mucosa. All species can cause acute bloody diarrhea. Now, as uh, for most serotypes, the disease is generally self-limiting and fatality is very rare. But as we said, sometimes if the immunity decreases in extreme age or other factors that cause immune suppression, then the severity of the disease will be uh, more. Also, some cases were accompanied by hemolytic uremic syndrome. If you remember, we talked about, uh, we talked about hemolytic uremic syndrome in the previous uh, lecture. It can be caused by enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Also, some strains of uh, Shigella can cause 
hemolytic uremic syndrome. This is about the uh, symptoms of the disease. Now morphology, as all enterobacteria, see, they are gram-negative bacilli. They are non-motile, and this can distinguish them from other enterobacteria, see, because as we said, all enterobacteria are motile, except Shigella and Klebsiella, and they are non-capsulated. Now, cultural characteristics, this is very important in the diagnosis of the disease, is that, as we said, genus Shigella, is non-lactose fermenters. So, on McConkey's agar, they will produce colorless, pale colonies, except uh, because they are non-lactose fermenters. We have Shigella Sony, it is late lactose fermenter, so it can cause uh, pink color colonies on McConkey's agar after uh, a long period. Second, biochemical activities. You have to imagine to remember important point about Shigella, which is that they are biochemically inert. So, most of cases, most of tests, of biochemical tests of Shigella are negative because they are biochemically inert. The invic results are variable, negative, negative, negative. So, the methyl red, vocus proscaur, and citrate utilization test, all of these are negative for genus Shigella. Indole test is variable, depend on the uh, strain and the serotype of the genus Shigella. Now, what we will uh, think about the triple sugar iron agar, we will think that it will be with alkaline slant and the, but the base is acidic. Why? Because it is uh, non-lactose fermenter. It is only glucose fermenter as for all enterobacteria C, due to, because it is lactose fermenter, because it is glucose fermenter, glucose, it will cause acidification of the butt, changing its color to yellow, and because it is non-lactose fermenter, so the slant will remain red, so the slant is alkaline. And the reaction will be read as follow. K, the slant is K, alkaline, red. The butt is acidic, yellow, with no gas, no H2S production. So there is no black color in the triple sugar iron agar for Shigella. Now the uh, third, factor, uh, third part is factors of pathogenicity. We have three factors of pathogenicity. First of all is invasiveness. Invasiveness, this is the cause that uh, members of genus Shigella cause bloody diarrhea because they will cause invasion of the intestinal epithelium. They will multiply them. They are causing local inflammation, cell death, and sloughing. And this sloughing results in bloody diarrhea. So the stool contains post cells and red blood cells. And this will differentiate the uh, infection of Shigellosis from the infection caused by salmonella because in shigellosis there is possibility of bloody diarrhea while in salmonella there will be no basilary dysentery no bloody diarrhea this is the uh, invasion of the shigella to the intestinal epithelium so it will cause a bloody diarrhea second is interior toxins they produce interior toxins similar to the labial toxins, heat labile toxins of E. coli, and group A Shigella, which is Shigella dysentery, produces a specific toxin called Shiga toxin. And this is similar to the virotoxin that's produced by the E. coli. And this is the cause that Shigella dysentery is the most severe one, is the most severe group of uh, genus Shigella. Shiga toxin is uh, neurotoxic, enterotoxic, and cytotoxic. It affects the central nervous system, and also it is enterotoxic, affects the uh, intestine, and cytotoxic. The third factors of pathogenicity is endotoxins that lead to the irritation of the bowel wall. So these are the factors of pathogenicity and include invasiveness, enterotoxins and endotoxins. 
Now the pathogenesis of genus Shigella, as we said, it is strong, quite pathogenic microorganism. Only 200 bacilli can cause infection, can cause the disease. So you can imagine how it is quite pathogenic. It can be transmitted from person to person by 4F. This is important. These are the factors that can transmit the disease. These include four Fs, which are fingers, flies, food, and feces. And as we say, the severity bent on serotype, on the dose in the age and the immunity of the patient. First of all, the uh, toxins will produce voluminous, massive, non-bloody diarrhea. And then due to invasion of the intestinal epithelium, there will be uh, bloody diarrhea. Shigella flexinary is the most common species most common uh, group serotype of genus Shigella in our country in Iraq. Also, as we say, the incubation period is one to seven days, usually three days, and the stool contain a blood, mucus, and pus, bloody diarrhea, and the sony is the uh, mild case. Also, as we said, recovery occurs spontaneously in most of cases, but in children and elderly patients, because uh, there is decreased immunity, that, uh, there may be dehydration, acidosis due to massive diarrhea. It can cause dehydration, acidosis that can lead to uh, death. And sometimes they remain as chronic carriers. Chronic carriers are very dangerous. They are the silent way of transmission of the disease because chronic carriers uh, are always uh, secrete the uh, microorganisms so they are always uh, represent a source of infection of microorganisms so they are very dangerous chronic carriers should not work as food handlers in restaurants for example because as we say the disease can be transmitted by fingers so it can transmit to uh, general population when they work in restaurants. Now, also, as we said, the shiga toxin is cytotoxic, enterotoxic, and neurotoxic, and it is secreted by group 1 shigella, which is shigella dysentery. Now, the uh, fourth part is the uh, prevention of shigellosis. We have four points of, five points of uh, prevention. These are include the uh, first of all sanitation, second interruption of fecal oral rules transmission by proper sewage disposal, chlorination of water, and personal hygiene. Three, vaccination. Four, isolation of patients, and five, as I said, that the carriers are not allowed to handle food or drink. These are the five points of prevention includes sanitation, interruption of fecal oral route, vaccination, isolation of the patients, and carriers should not uh, deal with food. Treatment. The most important part of a treatment is to uh, prevent dehydration. So we have to restore the fluid and electrolyte balance in severe uh, diarrhea cases. Antibiotics. It could decrease the severity and mortality of shigellosis including ampicillin or tetracycline, cotrimoxazole, and fluoroconilone. Ciprofloxacin is the drug of choice in severe cases. And as we said, it is usually mild and self-limiting, except in two extreme age, infants and elderly. Mode of transmission of Shigella is by 4F. Diagnosis. First of all, microscopical examination of a, st of a stool because bloody diarrhea, so we uh, expect to find mucus on the blood. Microscopic examination reveals pus and red blood cells again. Stool samples are inoculated on McConkey's agar, dextrocitrate agar, and selenite broth. As we said, in this media, because Shigella is non-lactose fermenter, so we expect to have colorless pale colonies. And subcultures are made on McConkey's and dextrocitrate agar after 48 hours. So we expect to find non-lactose pale colonies uh, identified by morphology, biochemical, and serological reactions. So by culture, McConkey's agar, they produce non-lactose fermenter colonies, pale colorless colonies on McConkey's agar, 
on salmonella shigella agar genus shigella will produce colorless colonies with no black color because they do not produce uh, H2S to differentiate them from shigella on SS agar you see methylene blue agar again they produce colorless colonies and triple sugar iron agar they will produce alkaline slant over acidic pots with no gas no H2S production so they because they are biochemically inert uh, urea hydrolysis is negative and motility is negative because they are non-motile microorganisms so in summary we talk about uh, genus Shigella we talk about seven points first of all the symptoms of disease we say that it is uh, usually uh, not severe disease except in group one which is Shigella disease which is severe it is started by water diarrhea and then passed to bloody diarrhea uh, regarding biochemical activity, we say that it is biochemically inert. The MVIC phenomena is variable, negative, negative, negative. About the factors of pathogenicity, it includes the three factors. Invasiveness, that is the reason for presence of bloody diarrhea due to invasion of the intestinal mucosa. Interior toxins similar to the labial toxin of interior toxins of E. coli. And also they produce the sugar toxin and endotoxin that cause uh, irritation of the bile wall. Four is about the pathogenesis. Again, it started by voluminous watery diarrhea, and then due to invasion of the intestinal mucosa, it will cause a bloody diarrhea. And the uh, severity depends on four factors, which is the serotyping of the microorganism, the uh, dose, the age, and the immunity of the host. Uh, prevention, it includes four points, sanitation, interruption of fecal oral road, vaccination, Carriers and also it include isolation of the patient. The carriers should not deal with fooding, food hand handling, and isolation of the patient. This is about the prevention. The treatment includes three points. First of all, uh, restoration of fluid and electrolytes in severe cases. Also, in antibiotic treatment and ciprofloxacin is the drug of choice in severe cases. Also, we can cause cotrimoxazole, ampicillin, or tetracycline and most cases are self-limiting. Uh, regarding diagnosis, we said we can depend on microscopic features uh, by expecting uh, presence of a blood and mucus, microscopic by presence of red blood cells, inoculation on uh, agar that agars that used for enterobacteria like Maconchis agar, dextrostrate agar, and we expect to find colorless colonies because Shigella is non-lactose fermenter and by subculturing on this agar. This is all about the uh, genus Shigella.